If you've been following along on this series, then you've got a website created uh, using WordPress, and we've been able to figure out how to log into the back end here of our website as well, which is called the dashboard in WordPress. And so this lesson, I want to focus in on making some changes to the dashboard, kind of getting an overview of what the dashboard has in it and what we can do in our website. And before I do that, I want to point out a couple different areas so that you can look at some of this. And I've got two tabs open. This tab is my web page itself, and then the tab that I have right here is just the dashboard itself. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here to my website, and then what I've got is you can see the title listed here, Lecture Snippets, and I'll show you where this is located here under our dashboard. I've also got a tagline here, just another WordPress.com site. You'll see that I've got a post by default within my web page, and this post, with most posts, they usually have a date associated with it, and sometimes it tells you who created it and so forth. It just depends on your theme and your options that you have set. But posts are going to be for the bloggers, whether you like to put things continually, new updates to your website, new ideas, new thoughts, whatever it is that you're working with. And so posts are going to be very um, popular for those bloggers just because of that. And you can see that it was posted on, now this is when um, WordPress came out with this for this particular WordPress.com site. June 28, 2011, so it's been a while. That's not today's date, so you can see my date's March 25th. So um, whenever we make this post, we can have the date that we did the post, so it automatically keeps that organized for you as well. Then you've got the content of the post. Over here is where we have widgets, and these are widgets that we can add into our site that we can work with. And you can see I have one page created other than the home page. If I click on About, I can go to the About page. And if you're just developing a site for a kind of like a company and you really don't care about blogging at all, then pages are what you're going to concern yourself with a little bit more. So I've got different pages and if I click back on home, it'll take me back to the home. So with that said, let's take a quick look over at our dashboard. So here's the dashboard. Now a couple of things that I talked about, you can see this little quick link area that I have here. My web browser is out of date. I'm using Internet Explorer 8 and 9 is out, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit dismiss on that one. There we go. So now you can see that I've got one post, which we saw the post that was on our first page. I've got a page currently working. This is the About page. I have one category. Categories are going to work with the posts. Every time we make a post, we can put it in a category itself. So we'll have different categories that we'll be working with. I've got one comment, which means by default they have a comment on there. So you can see how people can leave a comment on your website page or on your post itself. And then it also says that comment was approved. And I don't have any pending and I don't have any spam right now to work with. And the theme that I'm using, now the themes can change, this changes the whole look of your website. The content will all stay there, just the way it looks will change. I'm using a theme called 2010 at the moment and there currently are six widgets being used with it. Now, let's take a look over here at the left hand side of the dashboard. These links here are going to be associated with the WordPress.com and if you're doing your own hosting you may not see some of this stuff and you may have more options because um, with WordPress.com it does limit you on some things. So let's go through some of these things that we have here. These first couple links are going to be part of the site. The um, Akismet is going to be great because this is what's going to help block all that spam that people will leave as comments on your website. So that's a wonderful thing to have. You can see that they have a store here for us as well where we can upgrade our site if we wanted to. I'm not going to focus in on that here on this series. Posts, this is where we're going to do a lot of our posting and you can see the different options that we have with our posts we can create categories for our posts. This is going to be for the blogger who likes to put things up there all the time. The media is where we're going to be uploading our like pictures or PDFs or anything that we want to upload to our website itself. We can upload that stuff here to the media library and it will keep it here on my website itself. So if I want to take something that's on the desktop and make it on the web, then I'll go ahead and upload it through the media. The pages are going to be our static pages that we have, like that about page that we saw. And then I've got the comment section as well. I also want to point out the appearance will allow us to change the way our website looks with the themes. We can add widgets as well. We can create different menus that uh, will tell us what pages will show up on our navigation bar, which ones won't. I can change the header, um, the background and so forth of my theme as well on this particular one. I'll have to pay a little bit here on WordPress.com. I'll have to pay to do the custom design. However, if you're doing your own hosting, you won't have this. You'll have an editor within your appearance that allows you to make those changes um, by default. So that's one of the big things about WordPress.com. They, they limit some of your ability and you'll have to pay for some features if you use this. However, the nice thing is for somebody beginning it, it's free to get started with. And so 
couple other things we've got here. Um, on this one right here, we've got the mobile and the iPad for those tablets and phones. We have some settings we can adjust to make those um, the website actually work better for those types of browsers and mobile browsers. You can see the users. I've got information about my particular user account as well as if you're doing this hosting, you can create as many users as you wanted if you had your own hosting for WordPress. So that's another um, limit that you're looking at here on some of those things. I've got the tools, which we'll look at a little bit later, and then the settings, which are different settings that we have. Now the one setting that I want to focus in on right now is the general setting. So if I click on the general setting, you can see this is where your site title currently is. So mine had no spaces and there's no capitalization. If I make that change right now, and you can see the tagline here, I can just put something there, my website. And if I scroll down, and I'm going to go ahead and hit save my changes, you'll see that right off the bat we can start making changes to the way a website looks. And so now if I refresh it, you'll see the lecture snippets has changed and it says my website. So right off the bat we can make some changes and this is how kind of how the back end works. We make the changes on the back end and then once we save them we can refresh it, our page, and we can kind of see what changes have been made. So let's also go up back up here to the dashboard. I'm going to click on dashboard here and Let's just quickly look at some of these quick links that I have. I have the one post. If I click on post, I can see the hello world post. I can go ahead and hit edit. And I'll be able to see all the content within that post, like the welcome to the WordPress site. And you can see all this information here. They've got their own built-in editor for us to work with, which is really nice for us to look at. And so if I go over here, I can see there's the hello world. This is my post. We'll have the ability to add multiple posts, as many as we want, if we want to do it that style. If I come back over here to the dashboard, I can also go in and make changes to the pages that I have. Now, I currently only have one page. I'll click on that page, and you can see there's the About page. I'll go ahead and hit Edit. And this will give me the option to work with creating a page itself. And so you can see this is where the About page's content is. And any changes I would make on this one, I would hit Update, and it would make the changes. So I could modify that first page if I wanted to by going there. Let's go back to the dashboard and we'll take also a quick look. Um, the category by default is going to be uh, uncategorized and so all of our posts are going to go to this uncategorized comment. We're going to look at when we start creating an actual website here and get this up and running with a theme and an idea and so forth. We'll be changing this and so we'll be looking at changing that but all of our categories, the reason why we'd have categories is let's just say you were doing some kind of home improvement website. Maybe you'll have a category on bathrooms, maybe a category on the kitchen, stuff like that. So all of the posts that we put can be categorized by a specific topic. So that's going to be great for those bloggers. Let's go back to the dashboard. And the last thing I want to take a quick look at here is the comments. So if I click on the comment, you can see one comment. I have um, currently one comment that somebody left on one of my posts, on the, the main post that we had. Hi, uh, this is a comment. You can see that you can delete comments that are on there. We also have the ability to approve and unapprove comments themselves, and we can make some changes to those settings. So we'll focus in on a lot of this stuff throughout this series just to make sure you're quite familiar with it and get used to it. So this will conclude the video on the introduction to the dashboard and the changes it makes to your website.